<sighs> Damn, Q. Maybe you did that. Q Lewis holding it down live from the 48205 man back on the block with let me see how I want to describe her let me see we got a we got a writer a film director a film producer a filmmaker a poet let me see what else uh let me see child literature author we got all that right here. Miss Erica Gomez in the building. What up, though? Hey, what up, though? Yeah, so we got Erica in the building, man. Straight from the east side. Tell the people where you from or what side of town you from and what those humble beginnings was kind of like for a young Erica. <laughs> um, I am from the east side of Detroit. I grew up on Promenade off Hayes. And then Ooh. later, <laughs> I know, Ooh. I went to Wayne Elementary School. I That's went to tough. Burbank Middle School. And then we moved um, to Dupre off Meringue and Cashew. And that's when I went to Cass. And then, unfortunately, Boom. senior year, I got kicked out. <laughs> and I had to go to Denby. And that's where I graduated from. Yeah, Denby is cooler. I'm, of course, I'm not going to be a fan of Cass State because I went to the almighty King okay, Crusaders. Yeah, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Way down on the riverside. All right, so look, even back then, were you thinking about being a writer then? Or, like, where did this whole writing thing come from? No, actually, um, I went to the military straight out of high school. Okay. And that was my goal. Like, I just decided that I was going to go to the military and retire. So, I was going to yeah. stay in there the whole 20, 25 years. So, that was that was really your plan, coming that, in as military. Yeah, yeah, that was my Where plan. Where did that come from? Like, how did you even come up on that idea? Because I knew I was tired of school. I didn't want to go to college. <laughs> <All> right, I, <laughs> I hear was you. being real. I didn't I want to you. go to college. And I was tired of school. And they said they would pay for everything. So, that I makes went to sense. the military. For sure. Um, so what the what if you did? Let's say that you did stay in the military. Um, do you think you would have caught the writing bug at all, or you think that would have killed your creativity? I think it would have killed my creativity. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, when I got to the um, to basic training and stuff, I didn't realize that I was pregnant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like they gave me okay. a pregnancy test and it was negative, but I didn't realize until like tech school that I was pregnant, mm -hmm. and so that changed everything. My son. Gotcha. So, once I had him, I realized I didn't want to be in the military anymore, and so I got out. Yeah. And when I got out and came back home, I took I started going to school. Right. But I said I didn't want to do. So <laughs> right. I Doing exactly what college. you said you wasn't gonna do. Yeah. And the I, kids change things though. They obviously. do. Yeah. And so I um started taking classes, and I had to write a children's story, a short children's story, and I okay. did. And I enjoyed it. And my professor was like, "You wrote that?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She yeah. was like, "That was really good." And so so this is not even until your adult years that you even found out that you mm -hmm. could write. Exactly. I okay. was like 20. I yeah. said I was like 20. Got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Had you ever written anything before that? I mean, other than Scholastic. Poetry. Like, yeah, I wrote poetry. poetry and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You want to get back to that? Well, I still, <laughs> I still write poetry. Okay. Um, actually, I write poetry. I got a lot of poetry that I've written over the years when gotcha. I was younger and up until well, now. Well, I guess a better question is, are you looking to publish any of that work? Probably so. Okay. Yeah, probably yeah. so. Now, are you one of those? Because, like, for me, um, I've written and published a couple of uh, poetry books, but I'm more of a, a written poetry guy. Like, some people, like, I, I commend people who can get up in front of a stage and, like, do spoken word. Yeah. Like, really say their poetry like which one are you are you a, a I'm written? written i'm written okay and i did that and i bombed like <laughs> <laughs> i bombed they didn't really like me yeah. and, and then i was i'm not the you know snap the snappy fingers, fingers yeah. no i'm more of a lyrical poet so i'm more gotcha. of a hip-hop based poet so. oh so you're a rapper not a rapper. <laughs> a not, lyrical poet, a I'm rapper. Not, yeah, yeah I, it's in between, like okay. in between. So yeah, but I'm more written though. So you're more like a too short or more like a Nas? Oh, <laughs> Nasir, I'm more like a Nas. Already Shout out know. to Nas. <laughs> already know. I'm just joking with you because I already know that you're the biggest Nas fan. Yeah. Um, do you think that any of like hip hop actually influenced your writing style? Yes. Yeah. Anything Thank in particular? You. Um, other than Nas. Other than Nas. <laughs> Actually, right. I have like a lot of subliminal Nas like in some of my scripts. Because I really I'm a real oh my God. really big fan of Nas and hopefully one day I can barely tell. work with him. Yeah. But um yeah, it gonna does. Get, I'm gonna come back to that too. Go ahead. It does it like influences cause like the stuff that I write mm -hmm. 
it's it has hip hop culture. Gotcha. It's urban, yeah. but it's also putting us in a light that we don't see ourselves. So I like to write fantasy, sci-fi, but also the urban. You know, like yeah. not. I'm not saying like, and I ain't trying to knock nobody. Not hood ghetto. But I'm from the hood. I am. But right. I try to make it urban where people can, everybody can feel it yeah. and understand it. You know right. what I'm saying? Even, and even everybody can feel and edge. understand hip hop. Yeah. I so, got you. Okay. Yeah. I can dig that. I just want to, I want to go back to, you know, what you were saying earlier, just about, um, hopefully at some point being able to work with Nas. Like what kind of project would you want to do with, uh, you know, with Nazir? Nazir. <laughs> right. There is a project, mm-hmm. um, that, I would love to for him to be like a producer on the one that I'm yeah. going to work on next. But there's one that I kept tight lipped and I think it's a great concept. And I think he would really like it. I really don't want to put the concept out oh, there. Yeah, yeah. I don't We're want nobody to steal yeah. it. Exactly. But it's something that's totally different. Totally okay. different. Hey, you have him as a producer, huh? Yeah. All right, well, we just spoke it into existence right here on my show, so uh, we excited about that. Now, also, too, though, I wanted to uh, go back to what you were saying about when you bombed on stage, right? Mm-hmm. So this is the thing about any kind of creative, like whether you're writing, doing films or whatever, um, you take criticism. And yeah. sometimes it's unwarranted criticism. But, like, how do you, like, especially as a female, how do you get past that criticism and, like, keep it moving? Because I know that, um, you know, not to point, you know, women out, but I know women are sometimes a little more sensitive to criticism so like how did you get past that originally because every time you write something it's not gonna be a hit for everybody even if you love it so well um i've had a lot of rejection as far as my own screenwriting like a lot of people mm-hmm. say it sucks dialogue sucks my character stuck sucked the whole story <laughs> sucks like, everything just sucks. yes <laughs> but i also had people who gave me constructive criticism and I would take it and use it and tweak stuff. Yeah. So I've had to build like tough skin. Right. So even though I bombed at that, whatever, what was it, spoken word? Yeah. I didn't say, well, I'm never writing poetry again. I may not ever do spoken <laughs> word because I feel like what I my poetry is different than mm-hmm. the spoken word. But I pr- probably would get on the stage again if it's something tailored to what I write. You right, I got you. Yeah, because I mean, it's a, it's a tough thing. Anybody in any creative field is always that pressure of doing things that other people like because obviously that's how you would thrive. Yeah. Um, but also at the end of the day, too, though, like for me, it's kind of all about getting what I need to get from inside out, whether you like it or not. True, right? true. So I think that's always the thing. Now, as far as, uh, you know, being rejected, you know, it's not just the, uh, the, the poetry thing, but I know you said a couple of scripts. Uh, people didn't like but now since then you've got quite a few awards so you know talk about that a little bit tell the people about the awards you've been winning well um like i lost my son and like after i lost my son i kind of like walked away from writing we just go get into that but i no, that's (laughs) that's bringing me to so i started submitting to film festivals right now let's uh let's slow down real quick before you get to that point (laughs) since you brought that up this is also the uh, the idea behind the name of your production company, right? Yes. All right. So, yeah, tell the people about that. Okay. So, my son that I was pregnant with in the military, his name was Sean Lamont Van Hosen, mm-hmm. Ed Jr. And um, he was killed in 2019 when he was 20 years old. And it was like a rough time for me. And I walked away from writing. But then I thought about, you know, like my son, he was really happy at the accomplishments I was making with my writing. Right. And I'm like, he wouldn't want me to do that. So I started um, writing again and I started submitting to film festivals and I started getting selected. Right. And then once I started getting selected, I started actually winning like semi-finalists, finalists. And then I actually won like a first place award. Right. So that really made me feel motivated and like maybe i am doing something right Right. so i just started submitting submitting to like all over the country Mm -hmm. and i just started winning like i was winning nomination after nomination and right my script that i'm doing that i'm gonna work on next it's won like what four first place awards it's been finalists semi-finalists so Mm -hmm. a lot of people love that script but yeah that's what motivated me when i started winning i'm like Maybe I am doing something right. Maybe my writing is not as bad as some people say, <laughs> say it is. Right. Yeah, so I just kept at it. No, for sure. And the name of the production company? Yeah, it's Sean Van Productions. I gotcha. named it. I took my son's first name and some of his last name, and mm-hmm. I just put it together. For sure. So, so that's always like the kind of the constant reminder is like to, uh, you know, keep it going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, so even with those winning those awards, though, 
I think you were still a little bit, because obviously we had conversations when you were winning those awards. I think it was still a little bit of hesitancy. Yeah. So, like, what, what kind of, you know, got you past that hump? Because even though you was winning awards, it was still some, like, some hesitation. And I don't know why. And we've always had this conversation. But, like, sometimes you need a little extra push. So, where did your extra push come from? Well, um, like, okay, so I was submitting, of course, to the film festivals, but I was also pitching. So okay. I was pitching to different production companies. When I say, like, um, Tyler Perry, like, I was submitting to everybody, but mm -hmm. I didn't have an agent. Right. So that was making me discouraged and wanting to give up, which right. it would, like, stall me. Like, I was stalled. Yeah. And so it took, like, a couple of years for me to realize, like, I'm reaching out to all these people. Nobody's responding to me. Right. Or they're rejecting me that I needed to reach out to myself, believe in myself. Mm -hmm. give myself an opportunity exactly. to do my own film instead of looking for somebody else to give me an opportunity right so sure. that's what i realized and when i started working on the invite that's what you know i realized like you looking for everybody else to give you opportunity you got it you got it you wrote everything <laughs> exactly. get out there and do it yourself i just for felt sure. like i didn't have the money the budget but it all came together i mean you gotta think like you you talk about great filmmakers like you talked about tyler perry and you talk about like spike lee like none of these people had money when they first started like True. they had to start however they got it started now, and i know now because of social media and everything people kind of tend to make things seem simple and they not like you kind of forget about the whole process of like getting here so even with um, now you mentioned the invite, so we'll, we'll talk about that first. Even with getting that film done, so now you've got a film that's been completed. Um, but like, how still still there's a motivation factor in there still. So like, what do you do now? So you got over the hump. You like, all right. So I know what I got to do. I got to do these things on my own. But like now, how do you keep it going? Because it's still, especially with movie making, it's not any nothing's overnight. Cause like a movie will come out and it, it'll be like completed last year. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you stay motivated with that? Well, I know that my... I know this is different. It is. It's very different. <laughs> right. It's not easy being a filmmaker, but I stay motivated because I know, like, my long-term goal is I want to have a successful production company, mm -hmm. a successful distribution company, my own studio. Like, that's my goal. Yeah. And I can't get there if I give up. For and sure. And I have kids who... I have two that's, you know, I've lost... A, I had three, but I got two now mm -hmm. who I see... A brand like I want to pass my brand down to them I want to be able to help them right to be entrepreneurs and have their own brand so that's what keeps me motivated like for sure it's hard it takes a lot of money a lot of time a lot of patience mm -hmm. but it's worth it because yeah. this is what I want to do oh for sure and you mentioned about the uh not only the production company but also distribution now that's something that I think a lot of people especially in the film industry don't think about really like coming up to distribution so what like what kind of got you hip to that because obviously i know you want to be a filmmaker you want to produce your own films and then have a production company but like what snapped in you to be like you know what after all of that i want to be able to distribute my own stuff too though like what kind of hit you to that because like like i said like i can write any genre like my slogan mm -hmm. is a jack of all genres for sure but i want to do sci-fi fantasy mm -hmm. animation right and a lot of you know what's local they don't really distribute that. Yeah. So I want to be able to have a distribution <laughs> You said company. a lot. I don't I mean, think there's any. Like, I, mean, I, don't, I don't think there's any. But yeah. Uh. <laughs> so like I want to be able to distribute my sci-fi, my fantasy, my animation, mm -hmm. things like that. And I feel like I would need my own distribution company mm -hmm. and prove, well, first prove myself and get my own distribution company so right. I can distribute films that I want to distribute. Mm -hmm. Would you, would you be, and this is just a kind of a side note, just listen to, you know, how you're describing it. Would you be, uh, would you be willing to maybe partner with the already existing distribution company to like kind of make a, a smaller company per se yeah. to like kind of just do that niche and then break off into your own distribution? I would. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, and the only reason I say that because I know you kind of got into the mode of I want it to be mine yeah, now, no. so I, I don't, don't know really if you're ready to. I sound like that, but <laughs> also it is not just for me. Like mm -hmm. I want to help other people. Like yeah. it was so hard for me to get to where I'm at. I wanted to give up. I felt like it was no like support for independent black screenwriters like okay. i was getting nowhere so i want to also have like a management company because gotcha. um so that i can manage talent 
that's up and coming so that right. they have somewhere to go and not feel discouraged like mm -hmm. well i'm nobody you know i don't have any money nobody you know right. i gotta have an agent to actually have somebody even look at a script and most people don't right. even want to read scripts anymore so mm -hmm. I want to have a management company too. So and see, this is this is different. Like this whole conversation that you're having, I say that because I think most of the uh, like I, obviously I don't know the ins and outs of everybody's company in the city, but it seems like the the companies that are here now are interested in developing the talent, like the art, the the artists themselves, the the actors and everything. But nobody's really talking about cultivating the producers and the writers mm -hmm. so i think that's a little bit different so you might actually have a lane there because even though these companies are producing a, a lot of films they're they're producing a lot of actors but not a lot of writers and producers though mm -hmm. so like they even though they're the company they're still remaining the producer too so like it kind of makes it stagnant but just to kind of stick on uh you know detroit as you obviously know that detroit is doing pretty well in the movie market at this point now, is that something that's attractive to you or you still kind of want to move away from, you know, the, the local scene? Well, it's not that. Like, I love Detroit and I want Detroit to accept me first. <laughs> first and foremost, right. I do. I think we all be wanting yeah, that, I but mean, then it don't, it don't yeah, happen. Yeah, exactly, because Detroit is tough. But mm -hmm. um, that's my roots, you know. Mm -hmm. But I want to go beyond. I want to take Detroit everywhere else. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I don't want to stay here and give Detroit Detroit. Yeah. We already know Detroit. Yeah. So I want to take Detroit everywhere else so people mm -hmm. can realize, like, we know it's Motown. We know a lot of talented people came out of Detroit. Yeah, for sure. But this is 2022. Yeah. It's time for them to see that we not just music. We can do all kinds, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And so I just want to take Detroit to the world, not just yeah. the country, the world. Let people see who we really are. For sure. Yeah. Now you said that to the world, right? So how big is the international aspect of things? Like, do you even think about that? You know something? I don't even know. Like, I feel like I, you know, it's times I doubt myself. Like, will mm -hmm. I even get that far? But I would love to know. I would love to have a movie that's international that people for sure actually love. So it's just something that I, I guess, I kind of dream about. I don't know mm -hmm. a whole lot about being international, but. That's one of my goals. Too. Yeah, that's when that real money pop yeah. in. Like, would you be ready for something like that, though? I don't know. Yeah. If you if you were to do something international, like, is there anywhere in particular, like, that you would want to be at? Um, I, I'm a, I, I don't know what you're going to say, but first I want to say I'm I'm feeling like maybe some, some Paris kind of thing. Going on. <laughs> Paris, no. Yeah, no, no Paris? Thing? No, I mean, I want to go there, but yeah. no, I'm thinking more so Africa. Oh, yeah. So, like, Ghana or something. You gotcha. Know. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I was Nigeria thinking Paris for some reason. Like, yeah, not Paris. <laughs> right, not Paris. Okay. No. All right, man. So Africa. All right, so you heard it here first. Uh, Sean Van Productions over in Africa and shit. So we got you. All right, so this is this is the question I want to go to next, and then we go actually start talking about the uh, the most recent project or the project that's in uh, in motion right now. Um, just or maybe one or two more questions. Okay. <laughs> just about the the whole industry. So I, so I know originally you were writing scripts, and then you got into the film industry. And I asked you this off camera, so. We ask you again, like, what's what's the part about it now that you kind of like you, you don't like? Because like we all want to get to the industry, and then it's like, oh, it's, it's this that I got to deal with. So like, what's what's some of those things? Um. Well, first, it is not. I mean, I know everybody knows it's not easy, but it's mm -hmm. definitely not easy. It's time consuming. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of hours and a lot of work. Yeah. But also, like. As much as I hate corporate America, as much as I hate a nine to five, <laughs> right. I, I loathe that. We have to have a structure. I understand their structure now, and mm -hmm. I in my la you know my project that I, that's wrapping up now, mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Right. So that creates tension, mess, mm -hmm. toxic. You know, it's just toxic. Yeah. So I know that I have to have structure on yeah. my set. Gotcha. And I can't take things personal. Yeah. But other than that, and that's all. Those are only things that you can learn yeah. from experience. Yeah. So you you don't know it going in. So no, you so don't. now you know. Yeah. Now I know. But <laughs> yeah. it's not easy. Um, take after take. Mm hmm. I this is my first time. No direct. matter the weather. Oh my god, <laughs> right. we, we worked in like zero below weather on the invite. Right. I was gonna say so the invite. I do remember there were some winter scenes oh where y'all was like god, out in the forest freezing. or something, right? Yeah. It was freezing. So yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. But I know that it's something that I love. Like I'd rather be on set for eighteen hours than Somebody four hours job. at a on a computer in a call center. Like <laughs> right. I don't ever want to do that ever again. I hear you. So you're never going back. That's the end no, of that. No, that's my that's, that's my it. never going back. 
<laughs> I'm speaking that. I've already spoke that and manifested. Right. I'm never going back. For sure. I, <laughs> so, so let's talk about let's talk about the new the newest project or the project that we're working on right now. This contract healer, right? Yeah. All right. So tell the people a little bit about it as much as you can okay. uh, without giving it away. And and there's a there's a trailer out already, right? Yeah, there's okay. a trailler. She doing this shit to her own best friend. So imagine what she'd do to your ass. Out of time, we ain't did enough. Try and hit the road again, cause we ain't get enough. Keep the blicky tug, we be really in the stuff. Stop letting out the smoke, roll my Smoking on that la la. Turn a hundred bowls to a Benz, nigga. Why lie? Really get it in, I am not your baby. Faja, say you wanna win, better tell a nigga bye bye. Trick a finger on the picky, that's my way around. That happens to be my specialty, making messes disappear and leaving no evidence. Contract healer, because people think I'm saying killer. Killer, yeah. It's contract healer, like you heal a wound. Mm -hmm. um, it's about a woman who loses her mom, so she's grieving and having a tough time with that. Mm -hmm. And she realizes that her marriage is falling apart. And when she's trying to figure out what's going on with her marriage, her husband is um, murdered. So she's Damn. like grieving both and doesn't know how she can go on living. Mm -hmm. And she befriends a guy who's actually a grief counselor. Okay. And he helps her, you know, with her grief and get her life back on track. Gotcha. And she builds a relationship with him. But mm -hmm. she actually finds out that her husband was keeping a whole bunch of lies yeah. that could um, that put her life at risk. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So she's fighting to stay alive. Okay. And you wrote this. Yeah. So I got to ask, like, where does some of the inspiration to your movies come from? Like, because first of all, you writing kids stuff, you writing things like Contract Healer, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And then you're talking about, like, doing fantasy and stuff like that. So these are all different genres. So, like, where does that inspiration even come from? Well, um, as a kid, mm -hmm. that's all, like, that was our family time, like, watching movies. Like, my okay. my um, stepdad, he dubbed movies. We had three movies per tape. We had, like, <laughs> hundreds of tapes. So, that's Charles all. Charles and old man dubbed tapes. No, right. Maybe he rest easy. He passed away last year. But For sure. I watched movies nonstop. So, I've watched so many movies that's, mm -hmm. like, in my head, like, B-movies, all kind of movies. Like, <laughs> ideas just come to me. Yeah. And so, I just sit. Think of an idea, I formulate it, and I write it. That's, that, so they still all in there. They still all in there. So what is your? Uh, I mean, obviously you were classically trained to you know, like write for film. So like, what's your process like? Well, back in like 2010 or 2011, I started like researching. Like I bought a book, you know, them how to dummy book. <laughs> right. Yeah, I bought a how to dummy book, how to write a you know a screenplay, mm -hmm. and I started researching, and I got the software, Final Draft, and I started playing with it, and then I wrote my first script. Mm -hmm. And so I realized that um, I have to actually think a movie all the way through, from beginning to end. Okay. And like my shower is my think tank. So I go in the shower. <laughs> the shower. And, yes, the shower. <laughs> like when I get stuck on something, I'm like, let me go get in the shower. And I think it out and I go back to writing. So yeah. I will think a movie out from beginning, middle, end. Okay. And then like, I have like my most important characters and then I'll add the characters as I go. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's I'm story pretty, driven. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I, I was always curious because I like I've written some things, but never for film. So I was just wondering kind of what the process was. Um, now, just kind of what I mentioned before about not being classically trained. Do you wish that you had of like maybe taking some kind of film study course or some kind of something to do with film like earlier on to kind of get you a further ahead or something? I wish mm -hmm. like. At first, that was like my like something that was hindering me because I'm like, well, I didn't go to school for this, you know, they ain't gonna take me serious. Right. But I realized a lot of people didn't go to school. Yeah, like, probably most yeah. of them. Yeah, <laughs> most of them. But like, I did take a class in 2000, and um, I think it was like 2017. I took okay. a class in New York. 
in gotcha. Manhattan, an intensive screenwriting class. Well, damn, he went to the Mecca. <laughs> yeah, I went to the Mecca, right? And, but <laughs> right. like everything he was teaching us, I already knew. I yeah. had already taught myself. So but it was reassuring, knew. though, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew you was on to something, then. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. So look. So we're talking about the movie that's coming out now. Obviously, we won't get too far into it. Uh, you said possibly uh, being released around October, November, somewhere in there. Yeah, I'm thinking probably, hopefully November, because it's still um, in post production, so they're still editing it, adding a musical score. And all gotcha. That. Yeah. Okay, and in the meantime, you still got the children's book that's in the works that you're getting ready to uh, publish. Yeah. All right. So what's next on the on the movie scene though? Um. So I was caught between the two. I wanted to do a mm -hmm. TV series called We Can't Even Be Friends. Okay. But then I thought about it. You know, it's gonna take a lot to film eight episodes. So I'm thinking, it like, does. I'm going to film. A lot of work and a lot of money. Yes, a lot of work and a lot of money. Something right. I I have a lot of, like, I can do a lot of work, but mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of money. <laughs> so you. I'm thinking the um, Survival is a Ghostwriter. That's my award-winning script. Mm -hmm. It's like 8 Mile meets House Party. It's about <laughs> battle raps. It's about bullying. And I think it could be big. That's an interesting concept. House Party. <laughs> I get it though. I, yeah. I see it yeah, yeah, from seeing the script. I do. Uh, I do see how that can how that can happen. Yeah. Um, so this is something I want to ask too, though, right? I, this is still pretty early on in mm -hmm. your career, though. Um, but you've had some experience. Mm -hmm. So, like, if someone, let's say, were at your age back then, maybe around twenty or twenty-one, who's interested in getting into the business, like, what kind of like I don't know, gems. What you tell that person? You know what? And not just any person, but a young lady as well, because I think I think it's different for women in this industry so like what would you tell her to kind of keep her motivated or like you know to push her ahead i would say um first of all you gotta believe in yourself mm. you gotta believe in yourself because if you don't you're gonna get discouraged and you're gonna give up Facts. believe in yourself um know that you have yourself you don't have to look for somebody else to validate you right or to give you um an opportunity mm-hmm write 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 just keep writing to get better at it hone your craft get opinions take know how to take constructive criticism and stand your ground because they will walk over you they will treat <laughs> you like you're just a piece of excuse my my language a piece of ass that mm -hmm. is not um like you're not not worthy yeah not worthy or you're not serious mm -hmm. but stand your ground that's basically I got you. All. Yeah. for sure yeah. not nah. Uh, now, just kind of to go along with that, is there anything that uh, that you wish had to happen or someone had have said to you early on? I mean, of course, other than what you just said, but was it something that could have maybe helped you move along faster if somebody else would have had it been like, hey, so let's do it this way or something like that? Um, Probably so. I mm -hmm. guess if somebody would have told me, you know, like, believe in yourself, you're doing you. You want the right track. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't really, I was just out here, like, freestyling it, doing, like, I want to be a writer, blah, 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 but I mm -hmm. didn't really have a support system. Yeah, to, to get that reassurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if, I, if somebody was telling me, like, believe in yourself, you can do this, you don't have to look to anybody else for opportunity, your opportunity right. is inside of you, then that would have helped me probably move along further, because that's something else that gets me mm -hmm. down, because I'm 43, so. Mm -hmm. I feel Nobody like, would have ever known that you say it. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> They'd be like, you're 26 now. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but it seemed like it took me forever to get to where I'm at, and I still mm -hmm. haven't gotten to where I want to be. For sure. But I have to remind myself that age is nothing but a number. For sure. And if I was younger, and I I think like if I was younger and was doing this now, I, I think I would fuck it up. Because younger me <laughs> messed up a lot. You yeah. know, younger me needed to learn. So you kind of, you need it to be where you are now in yeah. order to do what you're doing. Yeah. That makes sense. A lot of people don't ever, don't ever come to that realization that, yeah, it'd have been cool to get something done sooner, but like, were you in the right mental capacity to really do certain things? You know, like no. people don't, yeah, people don't ever want to actually like accept that. Like you was in the space that it wasn't going to be conducive of being successful. So like, you good. It's happening when it's supposed to happen. Exactly. So kind of timing is like, you know, everything. I know it that's is. pretty cliche and shit. But, but no, that's true. Yeah, for it's sure. True. Yeah. All right, so outside of filmmaking, and then obviously the publishing, or, or I'm sorry, not publishing, but uh, production company, and then distribution, what else would, would like Erica want to do outside of movies? Like, is there any other aspirations outside of movies? Or is this the whole movie thing, this is, this is you? Um, really? I'm not really sure yet. Yeah. I don't know yet. I'm so sure. You focus on this movie stuff right now. Yeah, so, yeah. like right now, but it's, yeah. I'm sure it's other stuff that I want to do. Yeah. I want to work with kids. And okay. I want to train them as far as screenwriting and um, doing How about voiceovers. That? Could that be a thing? Like maybe creating a school? 
Possibly. That'd be dope as hell, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, like a whole little film school. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be dope. I want to work with kids. Yeah. All right. How? So, I I was getting ready to wrap up, but now I'm curious. Like, how important is that though? Because obviously, you wrote a kids book, and you you're interested in like you know teaching kids. Like, where did where did that come from? Like, where did your passion for helping kids come from? Well, I always loved kids. I always wanted to protect them. Yeah. And um. I've actually written like six children's books. Whoa, okay. I'm, I'm talking about one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm in the process of getting put, um, illustrated. Okay. And like I said, I really like writing for kids. I got two animated scripts that I wrote. Okay. So like, and I, and I went to school to be a special education teacher. Gotcha. I just, that was just something I couldn't do though. Yeah. That's a lot. It is. That's a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I walked I, away from that. obviously they need some help, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot for sure. But I love kids and I just want, I know like if I was a kid and somebody had, had that type of program, I didn't even know that I had this in me, that it was possible mm-hmm. even for them to know that they don't have to be stuck working a nine to five. Like they can be their own entrepreneurs. They can build mm-hmm. their own brand. Yeah. What make what makes them any different from the Jay Z's and the Beyonce's? Like they can do that right. too, for sure. And so I just feel like kids need to know that. Yeah, for sure. And that's a, it's just a difference in it's a difference in generations though, because you you figure the generation before us, it was kind of like just go to work, put your head down, yeah, yeah. go work in the plant. Exactly. By the time you lift your head up, you you did. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what you, like, did. you did. So. I think we've started to change that a little bit. And then now the generation behind us is kind of really getting the point. Like you don't have to work for somebody else. You can really work for yourself. And in today's economy, it's almost like it's risky to do either one. It's risky to have your own business or to work for another company because at any point that company can shut the doors on you. So it's like, it's the same kind of risk involved actually. And it's, it's more of a, you know, you get more out of it if you're working, you know, for yourself. So I, I know that's pretty scary though. So let, real quick, let's speak on that though. Cause I obviously you did, the nine to five thing for quite a while yes. before you decided to step away. Like what's the most frightening thing about entrepreneurship? Oh my God. It's, it's a lot. Like I had to get used to people coming to me asking questions and mm-hmm. expecting me to direct them and tell them what to do. And <laughs> so that was this a is what lot you of, signed up for. <laughs> I know. Right. So that was a lot of my downfall and letting uh-huh. my personal feelings and emotions. Cause I, I'm an Aquarius, and you know, I know some people uh, don't believe in science. Here we go, these horoscopes we, we, I know, right, but we work off of emotion, and mm-hmm. we'll say shit and do stuff that, you're like, why did I say Purely that? off emotion. Yeah, like, purely off emotion. So <laughs> I have to learn not to be a boss working purely off emotion. Yeah, for sure, because that can be a lot to handle. And it, it's not effective all the time. It's not. Of course, there's got to be there's got to be some emotion involved. True. So, so you treat a person like a human being. But That's yeah, true. But being sure. an entrepreneur, being your own boss is wonderful. It's better than going and having to give like 10 hours of your time to Man. somebody else's company who don't care about you. Right. You know don't what I'm think saying? twice about you. Don't think twice about you. You can drop dead on a job. They're going to find somebody to replace you. Man, the same day they list your bitch, <laughs> exactly. the same day they got the now hiring sign. Exactly. Like, yeah, and for sure. I just feel like, and this is no offense to anybody who's working a nine to five. Mm. I was working a nine to five. But sometimes when you have a dream, I feel like a nine to five will steal that dream. For sure. And you will for never sure. get to achieve it. Yeah, and there's definitely no knock on people working nine to five mm-hmm. because some people have jobs that they truly enjoy. Yeah, like if true. I find a job that like I truly get some enjoyment out of, then that's fine. But when you had a job and all you're thinking about is your is your side hustle that yeah. needs to be your main hustle, then it's, it's a problem. True. So that's why I think a lot of people kind of do both for a while, obviously using the nine to five to fund, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the dream. But after a while, even though the funding is good, sometimes you still just got to leap out on faith, you know, kind of got to jump off the porch. Yeah, I jumped off the porch. And it's scary. It's a scary scary, thing. Especially with, you know, especially with kids. I think it's always easier for me because I don't have no kids. So like, if I fuck it up, it's it's just me. You know what I'm saying? But when you got kids, I think that, that hinders a lot of people too, though. So, on your aspect, that's pretty brave, though, to be able to step out knowing that you got, you know, you got kids that depend on you. So I think that that speaks to your bravery as well. And I think oftentimes you and other and I, I, I hate to keep pinpointing women, but it's like a lot of times y'all just don't see the strength in the things that y'all are doing. So it kind of make you seem you make, it makes you feel like you're not doing the right thing. But it's like you've done something that most men probably couldn't. Like, we're not going to leave the security uh, or, and I use air quotes when I say security, of a nine to five um, to kind of jump out and chase your dreams. I think should probably 90% of people, period, 
just end up not chasing their dreams because of the the that fear of not having mm-hmm. the security. But in real life these days, nine to five, not even secure no more. So it's They're like not. you might as well chase your dreams, right? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so we had a, a great conversation, man. Uh, tell the people where they can find you at, though, on social media. Um, yeah, I'm on Instagram. You can find Erica Gomez, or it might be under Sean Van. I think it's Sean Van <laughs> underscore Productions. I'm sorry. First I'm not- of all, you got to know <laughs> where people can find you on social oh, media. Oh, God, but I have a website. It's SeanVanProductions.com. There you go. Um, And that has a link to my Instagram. And yeah. Okay, so what we're looking forward to now is Contract Healer. And uh, the invite comes soon after that, right? Yeah, I think the invite, I'm not really sure because I wasn't a producer on that, but okay. Sean Gilliam and Darius Henry, who is my partner on, Darius is my partner on contract. Yes, history. please. Give a shout out to the rest of your team. Too, I know, really right? Yeah. I wanted to do that. So Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're the executive producers on the invite, so I'm not sure when that's coming out. It might come out before Contract Healer. I don't know. Okay. But as far as my team on Contract Healer, I want to give a shout out to my partner, Darius Henry, who was the DP, the director of photography, the editor, sound effects, Dom, Dominic Sheldon, who was a phenomenal singer. Mm. He also um, just, like did some slash creative director slash first AC. He's editing sound and like the music supervisor. Um, let's see. Carlisa Andrews, she was my production supervisor and slash wardrobe, and she fed us re- really well on set. <laughs> um, Shout out to the food. <laughs> I know, right? Um, Shakita Dudley, she was my script supervisor. She's a sweetheart. Um, oh, my gosh. Charlene. Charlene Lust, Miss Lust. That was my um, <laughs> assistant director okay. slash the friend to everybody. She's gotcha. a sweetheart. Um Omar Henderson, he's the baby of the bunch. He was audio at first, and then he became like our social media guru. Gotcha. Because you got to have that. Then yeah, you and have then social we, media we added Toy, Latoya Jones later, who was very hardworking. She wore many hats mm-hmm. on set, so, you know, shout out to her. And all of my cast, from Marietta to... We'll see. We'll be, who was a phenomenal actor. Y'all got kids. Will Bennett? Here. We, no, his name is William Brown. Oh, okay, he, I, I was gonna say real big on that trick. And he is a phenomenal. <laughs> oh, this actor. is a guy you saw. Okay, gotcha. he's a phenomenal actor. Okay. Um, he's a natural. Aaron Tolan, great guy. Um, I'm trying to think of everybody. Cody Fox, Ar- Ari, everybody. everybody, like everybody, all my cast. I can't remember <laughs> all of y'all right now because I'm lost for words. But everybody was wonderful. Yeah, that's what's up though. Yeah. So oh my God, Giovanna. I'm sorry. She's a main actress, Giovanna. That's my honey. That's my girl. Gotcha. Giovanna Pozon, she's a wonderful actress. She's Giovanna's a, been in quite a few yeah, films. Yeah, she's for a sure. great actress. I okay. love Giovanna. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you we do. We all love Giovanna. <laughs> She's wonderful. But no, that's what's up, though. So And, and also, too, I, I know we're getting out of here, but uh, this was your first time directing, though, too, right? Yes. So, how? yeah, just speak on that real quick, though. Oh, like, my how, God. How was that? And where did you even, like... How did you just kind of learn it on the go? Yep. Yeah. So I kind of picked up some stuff from Sean because he directed the invite. Gotcha. So he was like, I learned a lot from him. But once I actually stepped into the role, it was like, it's a different, it's a different ball game. Like, yeah. A deer in headlights. Oh my god, I was so nervous the first day that we was shooting. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. Mm-hmm. And this is for any di- people who want to direct. You've never directed before. Mm-hmm. It's okay to take suggestions, but you have a time and a place for that. People want to suggest to you, let them do it before y'all start shooting. Don't right. let nobody take control of your set because that really makes you fumble and you don't know what the hell to do. Exactly. So, I yeah. Think, yeah. I think that's important. Oh, my God. Yeah, I so think that's important. It is. For sure. No, that's what's up, though. And your direct and debut. Uh, so, like I said, you got the, those couple of films. You're working on the, the uh, third one coming out. And then soon, uh, hopefully, we'll have some sci-fi fantasy kind of situation going on yes 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 yeah. i'm all about time travel and yeah everything yeah. aliens vampires yep now with that is the script already written yep i got, oh, so the, I got the like already scripts already written about, yeah like, okay so now you're just looking to get it made yeah all right so uh who you want to be a part of that who would you want to be to have in the sci-fi film not it don't have to be local just anybody in, in particular um i'm, I'm kind of curious to hear who you might want so in a to, to humanity mm-hmm. like i have like a thing for i think jonathan majors is a great actor 
Okay. From Lovecraft Country. Yeah. Like, I think he's a great actor, so I would love to work with him. Yeah. I would love to work with Khalid McLaugh. Like, those are two mm-hmm. brothers that I really love, but it's like yeah. a lot of people. Trevante Rhodes, Aldis Hodge. It's yeah. a lot of people I could see me working yeah. with. Yeah. Oh, you got, you got yeah, a few people in mind. I see a list of people that I want to yeah. work with. All right. So, we just talked that into fruition. That's coming, in, that's coming soon. I can't wait to see it because, like, we don't see a lot of sci fi or fantasy stuff coming out of the city like i'm trying to think honestly i i don't know if there's any mm-hmm. and i could be overlooking because i mean obviously there's a lot of filmmakers who may have not gotten their projects like to the finish line but i haven't seen any so this might be the start of something new for detroit yeah uh, that's what's up man so make sure y'all check her out on uh ig and on the uh website and the website again is it's seanvanproductions.com for sure all right that's it you heard it here first, man. Thanks for stopping through the block. Miss Erica Gomez in Thank the building. Thank you for having me. Take care, everybody. Till the next time, you already know what it is, man. It's your boy Q Lewis holding it down live from the 48205. You have just left the block. Peace out, y'all. Baby, you did that.